Hi there, welcome back. How are you? Welcome back, it's time for more readings, more readings you can trust. I hope you feel by now that, you know, you're a priestess of Medium Rosalind, you really are part of a team and a soul family, and we're working together to move forward. And you have more certainty in life when you move forward, knowing what you need to know and understanding what you need to understand. Um, readings today they're they're going to take a little bit of in-depth kind of turns for you uh in your own highest good in your best ways i'm going to relay the information in a way that you can understand it but you can see what you may need to do in your own energy to take action and empower your life and your children and your love relationships and other things as we move along in this huge systematic change in our life, I just want you to understand some of the things that we need to do for growth, they are learned. Uh, it may not be something that you've been doing all along, you know, but it's good for you. It's good to speak your truth and to take action and realize what's going on, okay? And to avoid those patterns you know, different people, same relationship. Avoid the patterns, different jobs, same problems. Uh, avoid the patterns, depression again, even though it's a different time, it's a different year. You know, all of these things uh, are issues that we can, we can grow from them, but we need to put our heads together a little bit and work on some of these things. If you are accessible to that in your own thoughts and energy right okay so i love you i'm priestess and medium roslyn uh, my website uh, links they're below and my reading specials are still going on the 11 dollar one question email answer fairly quickly okay it's answered pretty quickly so make sure your email is correct and the five question for 50 dollars uh, that's a pretty in-depth reading. It's usually done within 24 hours or less, okay? And I do those things because I love you. I like mentoring you all. I like spending time with you. And uh, whenever you don't see me just daily here, it's because I'm working on things. I'm working on things to help. I'm using my gifts. I'm sharing, okay? Take care. Bye-bye. All right, let's get into your reading. Why do we keep going in the same bad re relationship circle? Why is the cycle still happening? Why is it the same bad relationship? Why do you keep hooking back up either with the same person or multiple people and it's the same relationship? And it's like, wow, didn't I do this a few years ago with another person? Didn't I do this six months ago with another person? Okay, so I'm hearing spiritually a lot of us are, it's like fear. You know, we're resonating in fear and that's what's doing it. Let's get into it and see what's happening here. You all know, you know, all of you returning subscribers, thank you. You all know <laughs> when I hear spirit, I just speak it right out in the reading, okay? Let's look at this. Why? I said, Holy Spirit, Mother and Father, now tell us why. What do they need to hear about these repeated relationships going in the same circle, same cycles? Okay, two of wands, ten of cups. Yeah, so this is like uh, someone who definitely you're willing to explore. You have the thoughts of how to change things and how to put happiness and creativity and passion into your relationship. I can see that very much. But someone is not really there. I feel like some of you have been ghosted and it left a pattern. It left your ego kind of bruised and torn up. You didn't know what to do after this person kind of left you. And it created wounds. It created patterns in your thoughts and in your actions. Some of you are actually trying again in a different relationship. Okay, because you want this happiness and this love of the Ten of Cups. But what's happening is... You know, because of that wound, that long-term wound of someone walking away or not being who you thought they were, is creating the same energy, the frequency of fear. 
So you may think that you're in a loving relationship with this person and things are different and things are new, but what's happening is you're starting into this with a false impression because you didn't heal what you needed to heal before, okay? Some of you really need to take some downtime away from searching for that next person. And Spirit is saying some of you need to let go of that wound. And for you to let go of that wound, just imagine for a minute uh, if you are cleaning out a wound with a little bit of salt water, uh, a little bit of ointment to heal it, it's going to be a little bit painful. It's going to be tender because you're stepping on all the same nerves that you had when that relationship failed months ago, years ago, okay? I've spoken to people. I understand it. I've experienced it myself. Some of us have waited like 20 years, clinging and going back and forth. Some of the readings I do for how do they feel about me is people that have been involved for 20 years. They still don't know how this person really feels or what their next steps are in their own healing. That's what this is speaking of. Moving forward, happiness, relationships, and then really being stuck in the energy of I need to heal. I need to take a look and a step back and really figure out what is it going to take to get into the healing. It's going to take action. It's going to take some action. So when you think of healing, are you thinking of healing as a bad thing? That's something you need to ask yourself. Some people think of healing as a bad thing, something that they definitely don't want to go through. They don't want to go through healing. You know, but healing can take on very different meanings. It doesn't have to be that because you saw your parents not healing, going through trauma, avoiding things, you know, that they may have been afraid of residing for years and years in that fear step, right? Before you take the plunge to change something. It could be a wonderful outcome, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly what it was in your family generation that caused so much trauma and it doesn't have to be the way that you saw it or learned it as you were growing. It can be different. The reason why you're being called to it, guess what? The reason why is because you're the one in the family lineage, you may be the one to heal a lot of this negative stuff that's going on. A lot of the toxic relationships that you saw with your grandparents, your aunts and uncles, your parents, you may be the one who is actually coming forward to heal some of this. I'm sorry about the lawnmower, sorry. So some of that may be exactly why you need to learn a little bit more about your ancestors. You may need to learn a little bit more about how to set up your ancestral altar. Just doing that has been very, very powerful in my life. Is why I explain to others, anyone coming to me for readings, I explain to them. Sometimes your guides, your ancestors will step forward and they'll ask about that connection, the ancestral altar. Do you have a space in your home or a space, as I was saying, do you have a space where you know to go to that space because it's sacred for you? And the spirits that help you and work with you, do they know about that space? See, it's a connection and a communication between us and our highest healed, the, the ones that loved us, our loved ones and our ancestors. They reside with us. We can call on them. We just don't know how. Okay, so oftentimes we need to develop some sort of regimen, spiritual ritual for ourselves to help us, to empower us to help us so that we know and understand that even if we experienced a lot of grief and heartache with this person, that we don't have to be bound and held in some kind of spiritual debt forever, claiming all of our happiness and our soul's energy in our life or in our next relationship, okay? <clears throat> Let's keep going and see what else is here for us to understand about this. So what I'm seeing here next is that a lot of us, we have been in a cycle over and over for a long time. Because if you don't complete this death card, 
This death card is about the transition of letting something go and letting it die off and allowing rebirth in your life and in your marriage and your relationship and sometimes letting go of what was. This way you develop clear understanding of the rebirth in your life that can happen and take place here, okay? If you're staying stuck in this cycle, then you never come out with any kind of clarity and you will seek to find someone else to play out this cycle and this ritual of a bad relationship, misunderstandings, heartbreak, you'll find someone on a subconscious level to make all of those negative things happen again, okay? So that's really a clear and powerful, strong message there is that if it's something within you that's not healed and you're still seeing that past relationship as a battleground, then you're not going to see any growth, any happiness. This next card here is about waiting, waiting for something to bloom. And it's not blooming here because this cycle with the death card, it hasn't been completed. It hasn't been played out. There's no transition here. There wasn't the growth here. So here with the seven of pentacles, we're waiting. We're waiting for growth. We're waiting for something to harvest. And we're going back from waiting to see it happen to the death card where it's not transitioning. It's not moving forward. With the God of Cups here, what I'm seeing is someone who really truly wants to live from their heart energy. A lot of fear and manipulation may have happened when this energy is in the reverse. It's toxic. Spirit is saying this can really be toxic because what happens when, when we don't fully freely give and receive from our heart chakra, it becomes blocked. I don't know if you know that. And if your heart chakra is blocked, you'll experience certain sets of symptoms. I mean, I've spoken about that in a previous reading. What happens when our heart chakra is blocked from fear, from trauma, from childhood wounds, from previous relationship wounds, from being let down and disappointed. You hear the phrase, you know, that broke my heart, a situation, a relationship. He broke my heart, she broke my heart. That's because when it's not fully functioning and clear giving and receiving, it does a lot of damage in your prosperity. Did you know that? It does a lot of damage in your mind, in your actual physical structure. Some people have asthma, uh, other upper respiratory kinds of distresses and illnesses because their heart chakra is blocked. The energy never clears. It never flows. And we have to, as energetic beings in our lives, we have to stay in flow. We have to stay in balance. Uh, a blocked heart chakra can affect everything. It can affect your outlook. It can block your happiness. You can be not only depressed, but you will actually physically feel symptoms of it. And you will see it come out in different areas of your life. Okay? So let's move on. That is something that is a huge message. Not staying stuck in the cycle, but allowing it to happen. Allowing the death, the transition, the rebirth to move on. So you will have growth from what you've been waiting to see and what you've been working on, trying to harvest it, it will come. And you will be able to process it from your heart. Also with the God of Cups here, there's so much energy here that this could also involve children. Uh, you know, God of Cups, Queen of Cups, these are the cards that really deal with parenting as well, okay? And unconditional love. That unconditional love that you can put forward if you learn to release and to trust again, okay? So trust is huge here. Trust is a huge aspect of really learning that you can be happy. You don't have to keep your heart in a cage, okay? Fear, you know, living in that fear. So a huge element of this spiritually is to let go of the fears because I've said that over and over since I started this reading, right? Okay, we have the world, the empress, God of Swords. So we have a lot of major arcanas huge emotional transitional phases in our lives coming through the relationship. So they're coming in through the relationship aspect to teach us about our entire life, not just about you and that person. It's coming in by way of the relationship. So you will learn. We pay attention to love when we don't pay attention to anything else. When we pay attention to relationships. When we won't pay attention to the other messages that your ancestors, your spirit guides, um, the universe 
when we get those messages, sometimes we don't pay attention to it directly unless it's involving someone we love, okay? The world is about wrapping up some kind of cycle where you've explored with this person in this relationship already, okay? It can also indicate that it's time to explore and time to open up after this rebirth, okay? After you've let go of some of the trauma, some of the healing is starting to take place, maybe it is time for you to open up and explore this whole entire cycle, mentally, physically, emotionally. Uh, some of you are definitely, your heart broken because of a parent, you know, your child's father, your child's mother, your parents, your mother. The Empress energy here is about, it's about pregnancy, fertility, fertility, motherhood. It's about also, to me, I mean, it's also about abandonment, okay? It's also about abandonment because the Empress has to be there fully flowing in the energy of motherhood, birth, fertility, uh, small children. She has to be present and awake there. Some of us don't feel that our parents were there fully presently aligned with us. Some of us don't feel our mothers that we ever fully bonded with them or they never fully understood us. You can almost guarantee in those instances, I want you to know you're not left out. And if you go backwards, if you go backwards or if you ask a few questions in your family or if you think back, was there an issue with your grandparents? Was there an issue with your aunts and uncles, your great aunts and uncles that may have led to some of the issues you had with your own mother and father? Okay, it's always some sort of history there for us to know and understand. So start shining a light on your own journey. Take a, Just take some time to go into it. Even if you know it's going to hurt a little bit, it's something that's going to really truly clear out a lot of that weight. A lot of that that you've been holding on from one year to the next. Think about it, okay? Because I explain to people, especially to women, you know, because I'm just going to say it like 80% of the, the people who come to my channel are women, okay? all ages, okay? When you cry your heart out, cry your heart out. Don't try to hold back. A lot of us do that. We try to suck our tears and our pain back in so we can be strong and look strong. You can't always look strong all the time. That is some BS, I am telling you. When you are healing and letting go of something, you cannot look strong at the same time. How are you going to cry your heart out and really get out what needs to clear and release, okay, if you're trying to hold back on some of it so you can look like a strong woman in society? That's not how this works, okay? We cannot do that. And when I tell you that I've done it in my life, that I've cried on the floor, that I've cried in public, that I've cried at getting news, it's the true in-depth cries we need sometimes and it leaves a lot of us feeling so refreshed and so clear and it gives you room and it gives you the clarity to say yeah I think I can pull myself up and I think I can manage some of this even if it's only a few days of feeling like yeah I can see what happened here I can see now that I've cried that out and I think I released some energy I think I released some sort of build up here and it feels like I'm clearer here in my, my heart. It feels like I cleared out some things that I may have been holding to, like in my gut. You know how you get a gut feeling? And then you keep ignoring it. It builds up toxic energy there. That's why I always, I encourage, and I work so strongly with the bath rituals and the bath salts, the root work soaps that I do, because the herbs and roots in our life are there. They come forward. They came forward with God to form a pact with us, okay? I don't know if you know that, you understand that, but by me being shamanic and a root worker for a, a long time now, by me understanding that, you know, that is something that we know. The herbs, roots, florals, plants, they came forward to help humans. Do you understand that? That's why it's so powerful. That's why it can be so, so healing in our lives. That's why the bath rituals are very sacred to me when I prepare those for people, the root work soaps. Um, if you haven't seen all of those on my website, they are there, okay? I work them into so many different parts of our healing and recovery. It's so important for us, okay? It's so important for us. Now, here we have the King of Swords here, the God of Swords. 
okay this is the energy of moving forward okay balance spirit is telling me about balance this is the energy here of moving forward when you begin to clear when you begin to clear and your mind is not carrying 100 thoughts of what did you do what did you say how can you blame yourself for this relationship failing it's the clarity of knowing when to walk away when to make those decisions it's the clarity and the feeling of support you get from your own higher consciousness because you're starting to move on with your wisdom and your clarity okay you see how his the mark here is on his third eye the white mark okay there's clarity there's things that can open up for you and you yeah planning developing plans here these things are so important and you will see them and experience them if you start to let go of making another person change how do you just make another person change you can't do these things sometimes we take on roles in our lives male or female we take on these roles of feeling like you know, we can change the other person. We can handle children in the relationship. We can take care of ourselves. And we can do all of those checkpoints, kids, schools, doctor's appointments, managing the relationship, being sexy, desirable, creating vacations and new things for us to try out and moving forward and securing a commitment and yeah, right. You cannot do all those things alone in your relationship. You cannot carry the brunt of the relationship. You cannot carry the full weight of the relationship and trying to help someone else to change all the time. Do you know how draining that is? Some of you are trying to do that right now, aren't you? Some of you are trying to do that right now. You can manifest different things in your relationship, but you can't do them alone. A relationship is truly going to involve your own higher self, your own healed self, your own fresh and renewed self, and then the, the, uh, the support and love from the other person to help motivate one another, to help support and uh, comfort one another, to help uplift one another, to help hold one another accountable. That's two people, okay? One person can't do all that in the relationship. It drains you, and you have to be healed you have to be full of your own self-love, not denying yourself care, your, your emotional time, your time of being grateful and giving back to yourself and your own energy, your own body, your own thoughts. Those are the things that happen in healthy relationships. You are complete and whole before you find another complete and whole person, okay? That is how part of this goes. Now, with the moon here, these are about secrets. Drama with the daughter of swords and the son of swords. Yeah, this is drama. So let me speak on that for a minute before I close out the reading, okay? The secrets are creating drama from within. Now, that's one huge aspect I'm seeing here that we keep the secrets. It makes everything toxic. We start to blame other people. And then the drama we create in our own lives so that we're seeing things and it's kind of distorted, okay? The moon has a lot of secrets and a lot of distortions, right? We have to, we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves when we choose a new partner. We have to be honest with ourselves when we see the one that we are involved with and we see their actions, their behaviors. Are we lying to ourselves? Are we really saying what we need to say? You see how much blue is here? This is the throat chakra. This is like you have to speak from your heart. You have to say it. You have to acknowledge things that are going on within you and with the other person. If you really don't like it, you have to be honest and willing to explore that. If not, it's going to lead to all of this drama. Daughter of swords, son of swords, this is the arguments, okay? The arguments when we blame one another. Why, well, you know, you never said that. No, the person may not have ever said that, right? But we were able to see and feel from what they were doing and from what they weren't saying, keeping these secrets. And then we have these confrontations, these arguments within ourselves with the other person, holding the other person responsible for us not taking action. Yeah, that's a lot of BS, isn't it? That's a lot of BS. And that happens so often, especially now. 
because I have to say it with the daughter swords and the son of swords here, this is a lot of the social media stuff, a lot of the watching his or her phones when they're around is how many times do they go off? Did it vibrate? You know, is there someone, you know, messaging or calling? Did it go to voicemail? You know, all the BS we deal with, with sneaking. Let's look at their face page, Facebook page again, okay? Let's look at that. Now let's check out, let's look at, did they say anything on Snapchat? Because I know that it's only going to be there for a short while. <laughs> we get into all of those things, even more so than what we did when I was younger. When I was younger, it was about the pagers. And, you know, and then when you get upset, maybe you can put a three-letter word in there. To really dog them out, you know. <laughs> but that is some of this drama. It's like messages, lies, drama, arguments that aren't really fruitful. Okay, think about that. Do you stay in that energy when it's like this drama, irritation, arguments? Do you stay there after that? After the argument, are you still in that energy and carrying that? Is that something that's trapped really deep within you that you need to let go of? When you have personal private readings with me, I'm able so much more to connect genuinely to you, your energy, your gifts, and your skills, okay? I do that, and that happened this weekend as well with some readings and with some candle conjure, some root works. I started with uh, one of the guides that I work with. This is a very, very powerful guide. And, you know, the one who came to me, I was able to see so many of the gifts that are blossoming right beneath okay it's right beneath all of the the pain and all of the fear of being alone or the fear of can you control this other person you know it's right underneath all of that so we have to learn how to kind of be like a bird that's coming out of the cage you know i experienced that i know how it is i am not judging you in some parts of this journey it can be rocky you know, in your relationships, understanding, tuning in to the other person, being vulnerable. But don't blame yourself for it. Don't blame yourself. And I do hope that this reading gave you some clarity, some answers, some wisdom, and helps you to recognize some of the things that we feel are toxic. Okay? Understand that we're taking back control of our lives. That's what we're doing now. We're taking back control of our lives on the planet and definitely... You got to take back control with you and what you want to assert in your power, okay? And in your life. All right, I hope you enjoyed the message. I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.